Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create beautiful and engaging dynamic blog post hero sections with Divi. These are the final results we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating a brand new post. So I'm going to come over here to post, click on add new, give the post a name. So I'm just going to call this engaging dynamic blog post. And then the next stage here is to add a featured image. So I'm going to come over here and set my featured image. So in this case, I'm just going to use a featured image from my media library. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select it, set featured image. Right, so the next stage now is to click on use the Diffy Builder. And then over here on the right, we want to make sure that our page layout is set to full width. And then we also need to hide our post title. So currently it's set to show, and then we need to hide that. Now over here, if you have a category, you might as well assign this post to a category, but in my case, I don't have one. So I'm just going to set it to uncategorized. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead now and click on publish. Now it's time to work on our design in the visual builder. So I'm going to click on use visual builder. Next, we're going to build this from scratch. So I'm going to select this option, choose a single column. Right, so what we're going to do next is to add a text module. So I'm just going to search for it and select it. Now, because we want this to be dynamic content, we're going to come over here and click on this dynamic icon link. And then we're going to choose post title. So the reason why we're doing this is every time we create a post, this is going to have our title right there in the hero area. Now let's go in and set our text settings. So the next stage now is to go into design text. And then over here, we're going to start off by changing the font. So we're going to change this from default to Leto. So I'm going to search for it and select it. We're going to make this bold and the text color is going to be black. And for the text size, we're going to set this to 58. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set different sizes for uh, different screen sizes. So we're going to come over here to this little icon and set our tablet size. And we're going to set this to 45. Now, this is also important because when we design our website, we want to make sure that everything looks well, looks great on different mobile screens. So over here on the phone, I'm going to set this to 35 and then I'm just going to switch back over here to the desktop. Okay, great. So the next stage now is to enter our line height. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 1 EM. And for the text orientation, we're going to set this to centered. Now it's time to change the spacing values. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and then we're going to add our bottom margin of 50 pixels, padding top. We're going to set this to 10 and the same for padding bottom. So notice here I've added, I've just clicked on this chain by clicking this chain, the values are added both to the top and the bottom. And then we're going to finally save this, right? So the next text module is going to show our published date. So I'm going to click this plus button here. So over here on the dynamic content, we're going to click this little icon and this time we need the publish date. So I'm going to select my publish date here and you can see it's now been added. Now let's stylize this text. So I'm going to come over here to the design tab, click on text and for the font weight, we're going to set this to light for our text color. We're going to set this to black and for the size, we're going to set this to 30 for the desktop and then we're going to enter our different screen sizes. So we're going to switch over here to the tablet, set this to 20. And for the smartphone, we can set this to 16. Right. So the next thing we're going to do here is to go to the text letter spacing and set this to 14 pixels. And then the text orientation, as we did before, we can set this to centered. Now let's go to the spacing. So over here, I'm going to click here on spacing and we are going to add a bottom margin of 50. So this is just so that uh, we have enough space below this date. So now we're going to save and then we're going to set our next text module. But this time, this one is going to be a post categories text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my text module. I want to select it. And then over here, as we did before, I'm going to click on the use dynamic content. And then I'm going to choose my post categories. And again, you can see here it's pulled the category that I chose. But if you have your own custom categories, that will pull that as well, depending on what you've chosen for that particular post. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to go into our design mode. So I'm going to click here, text orientation, we're going to set this to centered. So for the font weight, we're going to set this to ultra bold. 
And we also need this all uppercase and set our color to black. And then over here for our text size, we're gonna set this to 15. And our letter spacing is going to be five pixels. Now let's go over here to our spacing. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. And here for the, bot uh, for the bottom padding, we're gonna set this at 20 pixels. Okay, and I think there's one thing I forgot to do here is to change the color. So I'm gonna go back and set my color to black. Right, so um, the next thing we're gonna do here is to add a bottom border. So I'm just gonna scroll down here, select my border, and then I'm gonna choose the bottom one here and give it a size. And this is gonna be one pixel and we're gonna set the border color to black. So for now we're done. So we're gonna go ahead and save. Next, let's add a new section. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button to add our brand new section. And this section is going to be a regular section. So I'm gonna select this. So the next stage here is to remove the custom padding. So I'm gonna go into my section settings, click on design spacing, and we are going to set this to zero, both for the top and the bottom, and then save. Right, so the next stage now is to add a row. So I'm gonna click this plus button here. And the column structure we're gonna go with is this one right here, two thirds, one third. So I'm gonna select it. Now let's go into the row settings. So for now, I'm just gonna close this and click this gear icon to access the row settings. And then we're gonna come over here to design. So the first thing we wanna do here is to make this row full width. So I'm gonna click here on sizing, set this to full width. And then for the custom gutter width, we're gonna activate this and set this to one. So the custom gutter width here is just to reduce the space between the columns. So that's why we need to activate this. And uh, also we need to equalize the column height. So I'm gonna set this to yes. Now let's go to the spacing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove the padding both from the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna activate my chain and add zero. Now let's go to column two padding. So here we're gonna set this to 130 pixels, the top, and the same for the bottom. So to do that, just click this chain icon. And then over here for the left padding and the right padding, we're gonna set this to 50. And then again, I'm gonna activate my chain so that the value is applied to the both sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and save now and add our first module. So to column one here, we're gonna add our first image module. So I'm gonna search for it, select it. So what we need to do here is to make sure that the image that's shown here is from our featured image. And to do that, we need to make sure that this is set as a dynamic link. So I'm gonna come over here and delete this one here. And then I'm gonna click this dynamic link icon and then set it as a featured image. So this will now automatically pull my featured image from my post. Right, so the next stage here is to add a right border, but we need the border to be active on hover. Okay, so let's go into design, border, and then we're gonna select our border here. So to add our hover state, we need to click this arrow here, click on hover, and then over here, we want to set this to 24, and the style needs to be white. So we're gonna set our border style here to white. Now let's move over here to our box shadow. So I'm gonna select my box shadow, and I'm gonna go with this option here. So our vertical position here needs to be set to zero. Horizontal position, again, this needs to be set to zero. And our box shadow spread strength needs to be set to 80. Now it's time to add our shadow color. So I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste my values between the brackets. Now, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. So the next stage now is to add our box shadow hover state. So I'm just gonna go here into each and every one of these. So I'm gonna start off with the uh, horizontal position. So I'm gonna click this little icon and set this to 600. Next, we're gonna move on to the vertical position and we're gonna set the hover to zero. And then over here on the blur strength, we're gonna set this to zero. And the box shadow spread strength hover state is going to be 80 pixels. And then over here on the shadow color, again, we're gonna change this. And for the hover state, we're gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and paste our color. But this time our color here is going to be an, a solid color without any transparency. So I'm gonna paste it in here. So you can see here what is happening when I switch between the hover states. Okay, so um, let's move over here to the transition. I'm gonna click here on advanced transitions, and then I'm gonna set this to 1200 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and save. 
So all we have to do now is to add all this content that we created earlier on into this area right here. So I'm just going to drag and add it here. Okay, and then just delete this top section. So that's our first example. Now it may seem like we have a lot of white space here. This is because I'm just working on a large monitor, but it should look fine on your monitors. Okay, so it's now time to move on to the second example. So let's start off by adding a new section. So I'm gonna come over here and click this plus button. I'm gonna choose regular. So the next stage now is to add a section divider. So I'm gonna come over here to my section settings, design, and then I'm gonna to come to dividers. So the style we're gonna add is to the top divider. So next I'm gonna click here on my divider style. I'm gonna select it. And for the color, I'm gonna set this to white and the height to 50 pixels. And then over here on the divider arrangement, we need to make sure that this is set to on top of section content. So the next thing we're gonna do here is to change the divider height on hover. So I'm gonna click this little arrow and then click on the hover tab and set this to 174. Next, we're gonna come over here to our spacing and set our padding to zero to both the top and the bottom. Click my chain icon. Next, we're gonna to go to our transitions. So I'm gonna click here on advanced transitions and set this to 500 and then save. So the next stage is to add a new row. So as you can see here, because of the padding, we can't really see uh, the plus icon to add our row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over here to my wireframe mode. And then I'm going to click this plus button here to add our row. So the columns we need is just this single column. So I'm going to select it and then switch over back to my desktop view. So we are going to go now to our row settings and add our background color. So I'm going to click here on the row settings icon, click on background, and then I'm going to add my color and my color is going to be white. So what we're going to do here as well is we're going to change our background color on hover. So I'm going to click this little icon here, click the hover tab and add my color. So I'm going to paste my color in here. Now this time this color is going to be a transparent color. So you need to drag this right slider down to get the RGBA values. So now I'm going to paste my value between the brackets like that. So with that said, so I'm going to click back here on the default tab and then click here on the third tab. My image here is going to be a dynamic image. So I'm gonna click here on this uh, use dynamic content icon and click on featured image. So that's gonna pull my data from my featured image that is set to my post. All right, great. So now that we have this, the next stage now is to go to our background image and set it as a, and set a blend mode. So by default, it's set to normal. So I'm just gonna click this drop down and set it to screen. Now it's time to make our row full width. So I'm gonna click here on design, sizing. We're gonna make this row full width. And as we did before, we're gonna click on use gutter width and set this to one. Next, we're gonna go to our spacing and add some padding because right now everything is way too close together. So I'm gonna click here on uh, spacing and for our padding, we're gonna set this to 200 to the top and bottom. So I'm gonna activate my chain. Okay, so the next stage here is to come over here to the tablets and then set our left and right margins to 50. And then over here for the phone, we're gonna set it to 20. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back over here to my desktop. I'm gonna to go to advanced and set our transitions. And this time this is gonna be set to 700. So now the final step is to add our dynamic content onto the row. So I'm gonna save this. Then I'm just gonna hold on my command key and then just multi-select all this, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it here, just like that. So I'm just gonna do a quick preview because right now it looks like nothing is happening. So I've just saved my page and exited the visual builder. So now if we mouse over this area, you can see that we now have a style going on here, which is great. And then on the second example, if I mouse over, you see now that we have this image showing in the background. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Let's go ahead and work on our third example. So I'm going to enable the visual builder, add our section. So I'm going to close this for now and go into our section settings. So here we need to set our featured image. So I'm going to come over here to background, click on the third tab. And then I'm going to click this icon here to add our dynamic content. And we're going to set it as a featured image. So you can see here that 
that's been added to the background. Great. So next, we're going to add some uh, padding. In fact, we're going to remove the padding from the top and the bottom margin. So I'm going to click here on Design, Spacing, and for our padding, set this to zero. Activate my chain. I'm going to come over here on uh, Custom Margin, and we are going to add spacing on Hover. So what is this? what this is going to do is it's going to create a shrinking effect. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, go into my Hover tab, and for our left padding, I'm going to set this to 150 and the same for the right padding. Right, so we might as well go in and set our mobile device values. I'm going to click here on this uh, little icon. I'm going to go into the tablet. We're going to set this to 50. And for the phone, we're going to set this to 30. And notice that I'm clicking this uh, chain because we want this value to be applied to the left and the right. Okay, so back over here to the desktop. So now it's time to go into the to, to the advanced tab, click on transitions and set this to 500 and then save. Right, so now it's time to add a new row. So again, I don't have enough space to click the plus button. So I'm going to click here on expand settings and then I'm going to come over here to the wireframe view and add my row. So the column structure we need is just a single column. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to go back to my desktop view. Close this for now. So the next stage now is to go into my row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on background, and we are going to set the background color to white. So I'm going to set my color here. Now let's set our background color on hover. So I'm going to click this little icon here, click on the hover tab, and then I'm going to set my color here. Now this color here is going to be transparent. So I'm going to drag down uh, the second um, column here to get my RGBA values and paste my values between the brackets. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. We're going to go back to, def to default and add a gradient background. So I'm going to click here on the second tab and click this plus button. So we're going to add our first color and it's going to be a transparent color. So I'm going to paste my values between the brackets. And for the second color, this is just going to be a white. And for our gradient type, we're going to set this to radial. And our start and end position needs to be set to 29. Now let's uh, head over here to the design tab and set our sizing. So over here, we're going to make this full width. We're going to use custom gutter width. So enable this to yes. And then we're going to set this to one. Next, we need to go to the spacing to add our top and bottom padding. So I'm going to come over here. So for our top and bottom padding, we're going to set this to 200. Activate my chain. And for our left padding, we're going to set this to 100 and also the same for the right padding. Okay, so now we need to uh, set our left and right padding on our mobile devices. So I'm going to click this uh, little icon here, click on the tablet. And for our left and right padding, we're going to set this to 50 on our tablet. And for the phone, we're going to set this to 20. Next, we're going to come over here to Advanced tab, click on Transitions and set this to 500. I'm going to save this. And then finally, we're going to add all our dynamic content here onto this row. So like we did before, I'm just going to hold down my command key and I'll just select this, copy it, and then paste it. So this time to copy and paste, I used a shortcut, which is command C to copy and command V to paste. But if you're on a PC, it's control C and control V. Great. So now we have everything set. Let's save this page and do a quick preview. So I'm going to click here on Exit Visual Builder. Right, so let's see how our transitions are working. So if I mouse over here, you can see that this looks beautiful. And then onto our second example, you can see here this image showing when we mouse over this area. Then finally, so there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my, my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.